you mentioned Cat Williams mm -hmm. a little bit earlier, man. You know, I seen that he was kind of upset about some things you said on Drake yeah. Champs. Can you kind of go into your guys' friendship and everything? Or, you know what I'm saying, how, how yeah, all that happened? You know, I mean, I'm not going to say me and Cat been like, you know, best friends or we're friends. But we're more like, we've been, always been like associates. Like, you know, the thing with comedy, we all want big family. Because we all know the struggles we all went through. You know what I mean? And whenever we see each other, it's like a bunch of brothers hanging out. You know, and we all have respect for each other. You know, because we know, like, you know, I, I, like, I respect Cat a lot. I mean, I know where he came from, you know, from Comic View. Cat in the Hat was his name. And then, of course, you know, um, got in the movie Friday After Next, and then, boom, took that scene and rode it to the top and became a millionaire, successful guy from it. So I respect that, and I always loved them, you know, and um, and I, I know you feel the same about me, you know, a kid came from a whole different continent, coming here to America and making it, taking that mother sucker thing and taking it to the whole ne next level, you know. So we have an ultimate respect for each other and love, brotherly, comedic love. There was, there's not much hate in comedy. If, if it is, it's just been more like in the last five, six years. But prior to then, man, we saw each other with like, when we see each other, we start thinking about each other's jokes and we start laughing right away because we knew, you know, what we talked about. Um, and of course, you know, Cap went through a few things in the last few years, you know, with his, you know, his career, like being top and then we don't know what happened. And then, you know, he kind of like went down and then, you know, he fought his way back up. And that's the type of person Cat is. Like, and, and like I, what I was saying on Trim Champ was talking about comedy, comedians. And I was saying, to survive in comedy, you have to be lovable. Motherfuckers have to love you. You know, the guy, and Cat, I said, Cat is one of the most lovable comedians in the world. And what I meant to say on the interview was, I, was, I meant to say, I don't give a how much crack I think that nigga smoke. He's the most lovable. But instead I said, I don't care how much crack he smoke. And I've never seen Cat smoke no goddamn crack. You know, but, um, I was, I was hoping he wasn't going to take it personal because even even um, Noriega hit me up after th that whole thing came out about me mentioning Cat, and he didn't even remember like he said when did this happen? Because I mentioned I was on Drink Champ and I'm this interview and he hit me up like he, met, he DM me like hey Mike, what did you say on there that I missed? That's how much it. Didn't, that's how much of a love I, I was. In, that's how you know I wasn't even salting this guy. It was more giving him his props. You know what I mean? And that's how he didn't remember that, because he, he would have, if he thought I was an insult, Noriega would have been like, can you elaborate on what you said about that? But he, nobody on set know that it's an insult. I thought it was a compliment. I didn't, re, I didn't even know there was a problem to, after it aired, and I got a call from a mutual friend that's friends with him and friends with me, and it's like, hey, um, Kaz mad at you. I'm like, huh, what'd I do? I didn't even know what I did. He said, you said he was a crackhead? I'm like, what did I say he was a crackhead? I said, let me look at What did I say he was a crackhead? I'm like, oh, maybe I said something similar to that. And I didn't even pay no attention to it. I didn't even, even watch, I didn't even go back to watch an interview. One thing I don't do, Mike, I don't watch my own interviews. I'm, this shit, I'm not gonna watch it. I don't watch my own shit for some reason, right? So, you know, when I brought it, so we, and mind you, I, I noticed, um, I knew he had a problem then because he was leaving kind of like um, subliminal messages under my post, you know, and creating tension. Mm. So I remember one time I posted, it was Ron Martha King holiday and uh, you know me, I'm all about joke. I joke on everybody. I joke on the Lord, God forgive me. I joke on the president, I joke on, everybody get it. And I remember I said a joke about, you know, um, cause somebody told me I had no idea that at one point, Martin Luther King, like, had a little white side chick or something. Or he slept with a white girl. Something happened with a white girl. And I'm like, damn, Martin King, that's how you deal with the best way to f with a white man is to f a white woman. Something like that, right? Because I go hard in the paint. And when I said that, Kat made a comment on my post saying, um, what do you call me? What's the word I'm looking for? He said, right? I, what I did, I, but then before I even delete that, because I didn't want people to think that me and him was beefing. 
You know what I mean? Because that's how much love I have for this guy. I'm like, I'm not going to create into nothing out of this, right? I was like, uh, right before I deleted it, it's already got screenshot. And then I think uh, it got screenshot, but I think D.L. Hughley, and then he posted it and, you know, posted my, my message and posted Cat's word. And then he, but that's what D.L. did. He'd be like, he posts something, like, what do y'all think, right? And then it become like a freaking viral and it's virus and it started to go around. Right? Right before it, because, you know, you know, in black people, you, 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 black people feel like you do something wrong. They read, you know, they read the great out of your head. But right before they were about to get in my head about me making this comment about the great king, my best friend dies. So it's not my best friend, Chinese best friend. I don't know if you're familiar with this guy. He was, a, he was like my co-host in my podcast. He was my best friend. For, I met him like four or five years ago, became best friend instantly. Passed from COVID. And since he died, that whole thing died down with it. Just like, you know what, we, that gets the whole, everything went, it just went away. Like, you know, they're not about to, they saw I was griefing on social media, you know, I'm posting him, that shit didn't go, no, it just died with it, right? And then, um, and I thought, the beef died with it too. <laughs> till we, you know, till uh, I got called to do Wildin' Out. When I set up Wildin' Out, the three episodes, the last episode, Cat Williams making an appearance, and we're on two different teams, right? But still, I'm like, people don't really know. I, you know, I try to kill this beef, because I'm like, at the end of the day, you know, at one point I was beefing with Kev, and then I beefing with Faze, I'm like, I don't want to look like no beefing comedian. There's too much money I had to be made. We love each other so much. Uh, you know what I mean? I'm like, I'm not about to introduce this cat beef. I'm not about to, I'm, so I'm just keeping everything neutral and keeping everything simple but all his all cats joke towards me was like career jokes you know like i remember uh one of the jokes was um more personal jokes personal very personal on my career i mean don't get it wrong you know he's he's accomplished a lot and we worked together on a couple of movies together we've worked on two movies together uh one was called repo with master pete um, uh, we, uh, God, me and Kat just took that movie to a whole different level. And then we worked together again and, uh, with Mike Epps and Meet the Blacks too, the house next door. So we always had a good chemistry, comedically roasting chemistry. You know what I mean? But this time, it, this time on Wild and Out, it wasn't, it wasn't fun. Because he was more like personal. I'm like, I'm, and I'm just trying to keep it cool. Like, I'm, I'm trying to keep it general. His joke is on my career. My joke is on like his height and you know, be, and, you know, just the normal major jokes. You know, so it was throughout. It was like that through the whole time, and I'm like, ah, oh, this guy's still mad about that. And mind you, we just everybody just died in the past few years. Everybody's, you know, I'm like, you know what? I went back in my trailer after it was done, and still nobody noticed it. Nobody on the on the on the set noticed that it was really beefing. They just thought Cal just being you know, a jerk, or, you know what I mean, or just going too hard, or going, you know, going around, not trying, you know, not keeping it fun. I'm not sure what they were thinking. But, you know, Cat got so much respect, you got so much respect for Cat. Has this episode came out yet? Nah, this hasn't come out yet. Okay. So we went back in the dressing room, you know what I mean, I'm like, ah, oh, I mean, this dude. I'm like, we like, late 40s, you know what I mean? We ain't young no more, we, you know what I mean? Everybody's been passing away so bad. I'm like, I'm not gonna let this, you know, let this little crackhead joke come between somebody that I have respect for and I love like a brother. You know what I mean? So I'm like, let me go knock this guy's dressing room. Nobody knows about this, this is exclusive information. I said, like, let me go knock, let me go to his dress, because his dressing room was right next to mine. You know what I mean? So I, his, he had a little, uh, his, his guy at the door. So I said, hey, go in there and um, tell Cat I want to talk to him. He came back like, you know, Cat, I want to talk to you. I'd be like, right, you know what? I'm going to take it to my best friend, social media. <laughs> so I went on social media and I, you know, I explained the whole thing. I, you know, talking about how life is short, you know. Don't need to be for people that you love, that you care about. You know what I mean? I, like, I, I don't need nothing from him. You know, believe it or not, in fact, I've put two hundred thousand dollars in cat's pocket believe it or not i remember around the time when his uh memory career is up 
And then I remember one point where I don't know what happened, but for some reason he was having bad sets across the country. And I had knew this promoter in Cincinnati that went to book him. I was like, okay, cool. So I contact Cat. I said, hey, Cat, um, this guy want to do a show, man. I, I think this would be a good way to, like, you know what I mean, make a comeback. You know, um, let's make it happen, man. I, I got him to, I, I got you, I got him to pay you hundred thousand a show, it's two shows, you know, two different cities, whatever. He's like, okay, you know. And I went on that show. I actually featured on the show. You know what I mean? Like I went on right before him, and you know, it wasn't a great show, and it was in his hometown. He remembered that show, you know. And then, um, so I'm saying that like, like I've put money, like I've, you know, like. I don't need nothing from him. Nobody need anything from each other, you know. But I just not recalling like, damn, I put money in this guy's pocket before, you know. So it's like it's all love, you know. And when I went to social media and you know, top, let people know everything, you know. And I think there's a part where I posted that you know, cat, um, life is short. No need to be for people you you love like your brother. And then I guess he screenshot it and posted it in his story. So when he did that, I'm like, okay, that's probably his way of saying, you know, Mike, it's all good. Mm, okay. So hopefully you guys are, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I good. love Cat, man. I love Cat like a, like a brother. What's up? This is Cam Capone. We got more content like this coming soon. So hit that like button, subscribe, and stay locked in to Cam Capone News.